Kangaroos are in good form again, Nicky Dell. Yes. And Brent Harvey's one of the reasons for that. He, he shows no sign of slowing down, despite the big scalps they put on him. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's an amazing player, obviously, coming to the club and respecting him from the outside for a long time. And then to see the way he goes about it, and we spoke one-on-one um, -on -one between um, him and I during the week about Crowley. I had him last year when I was at St Kilda, and he, uh, he knew he was up for a big game if he did go to him, and uh, he'd set himself and... Did you think he might come to you, though? Uh, I wasn't too sure. I was sort of semi-hoping that he did go to Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's just a fantastic player. He yeah. pretty much just ran him all day, played 95-odd percent game time, and... By the end of the game and late in quarters, he uh, got a lot of that ball. What, what, was, what was the reason for the 95% game time? Well, Boomer's a fantastic runner and obviously... So try and wear him out. Yeah, mm. pretty much. You've got to be able to run your opponent, challenge him physically and also mentally. And as a tagger, it is taxing. So Brent's got that ability to go forward as well and kick some goals. So we, uh, we tried to put it on Crowley. You can see Fremantle being 3-3, three three, could you, after their first round performance. Mm. But uh, where are they at, guys? Because it's not... Typical of what we've seen for Fremantle over, over last year. No, it isn't. After they beat Colin, we thought that they'd stepped up again. And all of a sudden, I, I thought the Kangaroos held them up really well. I thought Kangaroos beat them at their own game the other night, where normally a side gets a footy in their back end, Fremantle are able to really defensively press until that team turns over the footy. I didn't see any of that against the Kangaroos the other night. I thought the Kangaroos did it back the other way. And that was the reason why they were poor the week before against yeah. Collingwood, Kangaroos were able to do it against Fremantle. And did you feel that out in the game? Did you feel that their defensive pressure has dropped off just slightly? I know you're a current player yeah, and you don't want yeah. to bag anyone, especially um, your former coach and how his side's going, but uh, <laughs> just let it go. I, I still thought the game was highly contested and that pressure, and particularly in that environment, it's never easy flying four hours and playing over there. And you know what you're going to get when you play against a Ross Lyon coach team and it's that pressure. I'd be interested to know from you, Brownie, do you think that that pressure that they did bring last year, does it, does it wear off? Are they just getting too tired? I mean, it's only round six, and I know that's a bit of a talking point, what you're mentioning. What are your thoughts? It could wear off. I mean, I think they're... 5% off what they were last year and 5% in AFL is a massive amount because sides are improving all, all, all the time. Port Adelaide's improving, Geelong's improved again this year, Hawthorne's improved but I think their problem sits there plus in their forward end. When Matty Pavlich is still their main go-to guy and you look at the second best goal kicker, the I think they've, they've got, they've got mm. Mazungu yeah. down there, I think uh, Crowley's kicked four goals, I, I haven't seen Maine in there, Ballantyne's not up in the top. Their major goal kicker so far this has been 12, then it drops to five. Well, they're missing Walters as well, he's out for virtually the, the year. Clock's, the clock's running. Ballantyne, the small forward, mm. so they're in a bit of trouble. The clock's running on a premiership and Ross Lyon, you get the feeling that he knows it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, all of us are a bit nervous. I'm nervous. I don't like losing. So we don't like losing, but um, we certainly win and lose together. So there's no witch hunt here. And uh, we understand our supporters and members will be disappointed. So I'm certainly not being flippant. Big month ahead for Frio, who are three and three. <laughs> and the thing I like this week is we all love a Falcon, but the one yes. thing I like more than one Falcon is a double. And it was in our game on the weekend. Boomer, Ooh. bang, bang. Straight into his attacker. It's a really. Ford Falcon. And if we see that again, what's this? Look at this. He boots it, flushes him, oh. and one more. Oh. <laughs> really good stuff. So, but yeah, well, I'll enjoy that. Really well. You played really well on uh, Friday night, Nick, as the oh. Kangaroos maybe got the monkey off the oh, back yeah. with a 13-point win over yeah, free medal. Nathan? It was the one that the Kangaroos needed to reinforce themselves as a contender. Yeah, and they did that, Hutch. Probably the best win they've had uh, since Brad Scott took over. I might be uh, might be wrong, but that was just my opinion anyway. 13-point win against Fremantle over there. Even though Fremantle aren't travelling overly well at the moment, that's still a very good win on the back of beating Sydney. And Nicky Dell, a couple of big wins away. Uh, and you'd have to be happy considering the start of the season against the Bombers. Yeah, I mean, if you could uh, walk up the start of the year and say you're going to beat Sydney at Sydney... And and then two weeks later, go to Freo and um, or go to Perth and beat Freo. You'd be pretty happy with that, which we are. Um, my only concern is our, a couple of games that we've had back in Melbourne where we haven't been fantastic. And Why is that so? Uh, I, th I think it's a mental challenge, and that's where the game's at. There's no reason that we can play and perform like we did on the weekend um, and then turn up like we did last uh, two weeks ago against uh, Collingwood and play that way. So that's our biggest challenge this week, and as uh, part of the leadership group, that's what we'll be pushing. When you go up against a side like Fremantle, a uh, Ross Lyon coach, unbelievable defensive unit, yeah. what were the plans and the tactical plans during the week discussed leading into the game to try and dismantle them? Uh, one thing you do know about Rossi Lyon coach teams is they're very structured, and uh, you do know what you're going to get when you play against them, and I'm referring to things like they round you up and they put a oh. lot of pressure, and oh, we just that. felt that if we could keep the ball moving and uh, you know give ourselves an opportunity to kick goals which we did 
I just thought we took our uh, our scoring opportunities probably better than Freo did, and I thought they missed a few that they probably should. That, that's why the win was so good because normally going interstate and starting poorly like yeah. North Melbourne did, uh, to be able to come back and overrun them, shut the crowd factor out of yeah. it, and then win, that could be a season-defining win. No doubt about that. Sam Gibson and kicks a goal uh, coming up soon. He must be one of the fittest blokes going around. I think he had 14, no, from the last quarter. Yeah. And yep. it was very good all night. Uh, how fit is he? He's probably as fit as I've seen. Um, and coming from St Kilda, a couple of guys there were unbelievable athletes during the summer, which is a little bit different, obviously, footy season. But I yeah. think he runs about a, a six-flat 2K, which is pretty Ooh. impressive. And I think with the modern game, with the game opening up a little bit, particularly in the uh, last quarter and yeah. late-in quarters, his ability to run and overlap is um, obviously getting him 14 touches when no-one else can move. Well, yeah. good enough. PB for two. Bill? I used to do a, a 5K... Oh uh, no! Five minute one k. <laughs> <laughs> Nicky Dell, are you good enough to are you good enough to be a contender? Is this uh, team right now good enough to win it yet? Tough question, Hutch. I think when we play decent footy, um, and like we did on the weekend, we can compete with most teams. Whether that means we win or lose, whether we can beat the Hawthorns or Longs, I'm not sure. But um, if we play like we did, we'll be around the mark. Brad yeah. Scott uh, was interesting in his comments after the game about Brent Harvey and the build-up with Ryan Crowley. And he looks forward to the challenge. And I think Ryan mentioned it in the pre-season that he looked up the fixture and couldn't wait to play North. Boomer didn't say anything, but I can tell you what he felt. Strong words, as always, from Brad Scott. So too Drew Petrie, who played game 250, big milestone, did wonderfully well on the night, had a much better game, and he struck back at one of his critics, our old mate Matthew Lloyd. I don't watch the footy shows because um, obviously there's far too many old players employed trying to keep a job in footy making rash comments. So I don't watch those shows. I listen to those people who I respect. And um, anyway, I had it on the Sunday footy show on Channel 9, uh, just in the background on Sunday morning. And um, Matty Lloyd had written me off, said it might be time for me to retire. It made me a little bit frustrated and angry, but um, that's, his, that's his opinion. The gentleman drew, pretty rare to see him bite yeah. back like that. Did it really resonate with him? Um, I, didn't, I didn't speak to him about that, but <laughs> well, the one bit I did like is the player actually has an opportunity to reply, yeah. and I feel sometimes as a player and in the modern game, there's a lot of comments that are said, but you sort of just cop it and you just take it on board, and I, I know it's probably going to be built up and it'll be something bigger than it really is, but I actually don't mind guys being able to reply, particularly after... Yeah, but it, hang on, this, everyone can reply all the time, it's just players don't choose to... Not in the modern game, huh? Players you, don't uh, choose you, to do you, enough media. But Lloydy's paid, and, and it's funny because it's, it's funny because it happened to Lloydy, but Lloydy <laughs> is paid to give yeah. his opinion, that was his opinion, and I'm sure that Drew Petrie watches the footy shows. Uh, <laughs> just with that, on, um, on last week, when it was really tough, I, I said... Even Tony Lockett playing wouldn't have got a kick last week playing for North Melbourne. Does that yeah. come back to the midfield because the ball movement was so yeah. slow and it was just made it so hard for everyone? As you know, Shane, yeah. when uh, things aren't going right, it's always the midfield. We don't help defend, we don't help attack. Um, but I just thought we were poor last week and we don't give Drew a lot of opportunities. And I don't think we gave anyone. But the things that Drew does, and it's, it's easy to say, but he does so much off the, oh, yeah. off the ball to give other guys an opportunity to score. And uh, I think he's been, he's been OK. You were magnificent all night until the end. Clearly you put your two smallest players in a position of personal <laughs> jeopardy here. Oh, Lee Adams has had about 15 shoulder injuries and he's had to go on your lift crew. You've gone with a two-man small lift crew, Brent Harvey as well. <laughs> Surely Ferrito was brought in for the sole purpose of lifting. Oh, the and boys got the job done. That was OK. I, I actually got there a little bit late and I, I laughed because Drew's feet were nearly touching the ground as they were taking him <laughs> off there. Boomer so. Harvey was outstanding. <laughs> Nate Five. Uh, oh, Nick Del Sano no. was very good. Didn't put him in here just because he was coming in. But Gibson, as you said, just kept running. 14 disposals in the last quarter. Game, Nick mate? Del Sano was very good. Do you agree with those, Nicky Del? Oh, a little bit stiff. I thought I was a little bit better than seven. <laughs> but uh, that's fine, Nate. That's your opinion. <laughs> Our Sunday yarn with Basha Hawley coming your way next on the Sunday Footy Show.